This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Tech for designers has changed a lot over the last 10 years, and I wanted to design some trophies, so here we are. The most improved tech, the most underrated tech, the boldest move, what's the best app of the decade, what's the best hardware of the decade, you know, that sort of thing. Most people overestimate what they can do in one year and underestimate what they can do in 10 years. Bill Gates. If we go back to 2010, Wacom had a stranglehold on the hardware side of things. We had Adobe, which was pretty much the only game in town on the software side of things. And what we've seen in the last 10 years is new competitors, smaller apps grow and flourish. We've seen the release of the iPad. We've seen mobile tablets, whether it's Windows or Android. So there's a lot to cover. So why don't we just get to the awards? The first award today is for the most improved tech. And this one, this one was a little tough, but I'm giving it to Huion. In in the early teens, Huion was selling smaller graphics tablets using UC Logic's digitizers. One thing Huion did really well, at least compared to some of the other manufacturers at the time, were taking these digitizers and just making better looking and functioning products with them. Early screen-based pen displays from the beginning of the decade had a lot of problems. We're talking about dead pixels, oftentimes dust would get caught underneath the glass during the manufacturing process. Not to mention unreliable builds and quality meant that most illustrators were happy to pay two and a half to three times as much just to get Wacom's kind of quality in their high-end Cintiqs. And what we've seen, especially just in the last three or four years, is that gap has just closed dramatically in terms of the kind of quality you can get from manufacturers like Huion and XP Pen and Artisol compared to what you could get from a Wacom that's three times more. And that's just in the build quality. If we're talking about the actual drawing experience, that's really improved too. For example, now many of these manufacturers like Huion are using bonded displays that reduces parallax, the where the tip of your pen hits the glass compared to where that cursor appears underneath it. And also the drawing experience in general, just adding things like tilt to the pen or cleaner lines, less wiggle, less wave. I think you can still definitely make the case that Wacom is still the best out there, but when you look at the price to quality ratio, it's, it's getting a lot closer now than it used to be. What's next? I don't know. I would love to see Huion start adding 4K screens, especially to their larger 19 and 22 inch devices. The award for the most controversial move of the decade has to go to Adobe for moving to the subscription model. In June of 2013, Adobe started only delivering new features and software versions via their Creative Cloud subscription service instead of selling them in one big giant box that at the time was called the Creative Suite. Obviously, nobody likes paying that monthly subscription price, but we were already paying the same price roughly for the big updates that we were getting. The biggest problem that a lot of folks had was the minute you stop paying for the service, you can't use that software anymore. I personally was able to hold out for a good two years before moving over to the subscription plan myself. And as much as customers may dislike this model, stockholders seem to like it. Adobe stock price has risen pretty well over the past decade. There has been a silver lining to this creative cloud. Not in the mood for puns? No? Not here? No? Okay. It opened the door for a lot of competitors to move into this space and do a lot of great things. Apps like Clip Studio went mainstream. Other companies like Serif decided to just make their own affordable versions of Adobe software. Affinity Photo, Affinity Designer, Affinity Publisher. These are super robust, feature-rich apps that were first available on the Mac, moved over to Windows, and now many of them are available on the iPad. Boldest move of the decade. I'm giving this one to Microsoft. Microsoft for, wait for it, Windows 8. Wait, 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 Brad, Windows 8, when everybody knows Windows 8 was terrible. I know, I know, but what I'm saying is this award is for making a bold move. And now that we have some time behind us to look back at this bold move, I think we could say it was a pretty good call. Released in the fall of 2012, Windows 8 was a drastic change from Windows 7, which was pretty popular. Windows 8 decided to go primarily touch-based and radically changed the interface of Windows. Hiding the desktop, making the start bar an entire start screen, rethinking the entire Windows interface from the ground up to work better on touch-enabled devices. And even though at the time Windows 8 was too much too soon, it was still an incredibly bold move that set them up for the future. So much of the innovation in the personal computer and laptop space was coming from Apple before then. But since the release of Windows 8, 
we've seen more innovation from Microsoft and other Windows manufacturers than I think we've really seen from Apple. In the last five years, the things we've seen come out of Apple have been different keyboards, less ports, a touch bar. Windows computers, on the other hand, have given us a lot of interesting things. We've seen tablet slash laptop hybrids, an explosion of pen-enabled devices, things like the Surface Studio Workstation, two-screen touch-enabled laptops, whatever this thing is. All of this started because Microsoft took a huge risk with Windows 8 and continued to refine it and make it better for everybody with Windows 10. And we've seen Microsoft continue to make these bold moves throughout the decade. Just recently, they released the Surface Pro X that contains an ARM chip, even though most software isn't really ready to run on it yet. And I think this is a case of a lot of people looking at that device and saying, well, it can't do this now, but it's Microsoft looking ahead. If software makers start supporting ARM chips, it will enable hardware manufacturers to do more interesting things in the future. It's not about the Surface Pro X, it's about what the ecosystem will look like five, 10 years down the road. Reminds me a lot of a good Michael Scott quote I saw once. Most reliable product of the decade goes to the Intuos 4. Obviously, this is purely anecdotal. I don't have any hardcore evidence on this. The one piece of evidence I do have, which is pretty subjective, is that whenever I review any Wacom product, I always get one or two comments from people saying, I'm still rocking the Intuos 4. Some people even say they're still rocking the Intuos 3. It's hard to find another group of people that's just so dedicated to using their old but reliable pieces of hardware. In today's world, I think if you buy a piece of tech and you can make it last five years, you're doing really well. But if you buy a piece of tech and you're using it for 10 years, it's kind of amazing. Best name change of the decade goes to Clip Studio Paint. It was called Manga Studio, but then they changed the name to Clip Studio. So, uh, so that's it. It's a, this is a really short award. The most underrated tech of the decade goes to Wacom's AES. When you hear the name Wacom, you think of big, expensive computer products like the Cintiq, the Intuos, the Mobile Studio Pro, but quietly, or maybe not quietly, depending on what you read, Wacom's been licensing out their pen technology for lots and lots of other different uses. You will find Wacom's AES and HP's laptops and tablets, Samsung's products, and all sorts of different pens in different places. The cool thing about Wacom's AES is every so often you buy a product that doesn't look all that interesting, and all of a sudden you get a really, really good drawing experience. I've given Wacom two good awards. It's time time to give Wacom a, a bad award. This one is called the Fizzle Award. That's for something that looked really cool and looked like it could be the future, but it just kind of fizzled. This award goes to the Wacom Inkling. What on earth is the Wacom Inkling? Well, that's why it's getting the Fizzle Award. The Inkling was a pen with ink, like a real pen that you could write with on real paper, but it also recorded all of your strokes and would save them and digitize them into a file that you could open on your computer. The Inkling was released in 2011. Back then, if you wanted to draw digitally, you had to fork over over a lot of money for either an Intuos tablet, which didn't have a screen, so it was harder to draw with because you had to train your hand to move, or you'd have to spend a lot of money, like $1,000 plus, to get a Cintiq to get a screen blaze tablet. Not to mention that in 2011, None of this drawing tech was particularly portable. It was heavy, there were a lot of wires, all of a sudden you had something that you could throw in your bag and take with you. The problem with the Inkling is that it was digital drawing without any of the benefits of digital drawing. Being able to undo, being able to color and finish your artwork. Even though this wasn't really a great fit for illustrators and designers, it did end up finding a home amongst people who liked handwriting, recording their notes digitally. Today, this tech still lives on in things like Wacom's Intuos Paper Edition and some other products that are designed specifically for people who are taking notes. We are down to two more awards, the one for the best app of the decade and also the best hardware of the decade. But first, I have one award for the best sponsor of the week, and that goes to Squarespace. You already know that Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a professional website, online store, or portfolio, but you can do so much more. 
Once your site is set up, you can grow and engage your audience with Squarespace's email campaigns. Create powerful email content that matches your website with your existing products, blog posts, and logo so that your messaging is consistent and effective. Schedule messages, manage your email list, and even set up automations all within Squarespace's easy to use interface. Head to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Brad Colbo to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. Best new app of the decade. This one is going to procreate. This was really tough for me because I had to choose between Affinity Designer slash Affinity Photo, which is a great replacement for Adobe software, or Procreate. At the end, I went with Procreate because I think Procreate's interface and what they've done is newer and fresher than anything we've seen hit the art market in quite some time. What makes Procreate so good? It was designed from the ground up to work with the iPad and it was designed for painting, and pretty much only painted. This led to a very minimal interface and a super focused UI, focused on the size of your brushes, the flow of those brushes, and all of the other settings and features were kind of hidden away so you could just focus on painting. Little touches which are common in apps now, like how smooth the pinching and zooming are, or how you can use two fingers to undo and three fingers to redo, change the way that we all draw digitally. In most apps, features are accomplished using icons. Here, they're done with gestures. You drag your color instead of having a paint bucket icon. If you want a straight line, you just hold your pencil for a fraction of a second at the end of your line to snap into place. Same with the shape tools. Some things like text and animation, it's in there, but it's hidden away in a menu, so it's not getting in the way of your core task of drawing. Plus, a steady stream of updates over the years have it bursting with features, but they never get in the way of what Procreate already does well. If you've used other touch-based painting apps over the last several years, Everything I've just said may not seem particularly special. Every other app has these features. That's because a majority of these features were established by Procreate. And our final award goes to best new hardware of the decade, and that goes to the iPad Pro slash Apple Pencil. No, I'm drowning under Apple fanboy comments. And I think you can make a case for putting the Surface Pro here, having the pen being able to draw on the go. But the reason that I personally put the iPad here is it didn't just change the hardware side of things, it changed the software side of things too. The iPad was released in 2010, but for the first five years, drawing with it, well, it kind of stunk. But in the fall of 2015, all of that changed with the release of the iPad Pro and the Apple Pencil. Now, the iPad was an amazing art tool. Just as importantly, it was mobile. It wasn't the first, but at the beginning of the decade, everything had to be wired in. Cintiqs had these big power bricks and they were heavy. It was hard to take them from place to place. You couldn't sit on the couch and draw. On the software side of things, one of the knocks against the iPad when the Apple Pencil was released is that there were art apps, but they felt kind of light, fluffy. They weren't professional level art apps. But in the last five years, we've really seen that ecosystem grow. And since the iPad didn't have a mouse and it didn't have a keyboard, all of these apps couldn't just be ported over from a computer with a couple touch features enabled. All of these apps had to be rethought from the ground up to work with a touch-based interface. Today, all modern iPads that Apple sells over on its website work with the Apple Pencil. And even Adobe is starting to convert their desktop apps over into iPad apps, completely redesigning their interfaces to be touch enabled. And what we're seeing is many of these art apps roll out to the iPad first, like Adobe's Fresco and Adobe Photoshop, only to be rolled out to Windows tablets later. So that is my list. Those are the awards. What do you guys think? It's been an amazing decade. I'm really looking forward to covering the next decade right here on this here YouTube channel. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in a couple of years.